Good morning, everybody. My name is Walter Smith, and I'm one of the teachers of this class on 101, the 101 Bible class. And this morning we have a real treat for you. We have Brother Billy Emmett, Pastor Billy Emmett. And he's going to bring the lesson, and it will be very interesting. And uh, I see we have some shiny faces, and we're looking forward to making them more shiny, if possible. Uh, my name is Walter Smith, as I indicated, and at this time I'm going to sing a song. And I think most people are familiar with it. It's called In the Garden. <laughs> It's good to be with you this morning. I appreciate so much Walter's uh, invitation for me to come and bring the uh, Sunday School lesson this morning. And this lesson is a very, very beautiful lesson. And what uh, Brother Walter sang is just exactly what the lesson is about. And the lesson maybe has got a little bit more than that in it too. But uh, I want to start out. It's the 20th chapter of the uh, Gospel of John. Uh, the writer of our series of lessons has uh, d done this uh, of John in terms of uh, people who encountered Jesus, uh, and this is about one of those. And it begins with the fact that uh, on the Easter morning, uh, the first day of the week, at, at, even while it was still dark, it says that Mary of Magdalene, or Mary Mag Magdalene, uh, was uh, coming to the grave, uh, and she was there. And when she, she came there with spices and to anoint the body of Jesus, uh, the Jesus had previously been laid in the tomb, a borrowed tomb of Joseph or Arthemia, and he... Uh, uh, he and Nicodemus had laid the body of Jesus in the tomb, and they had wrapped him in grave clothes and lay him on a ledge that had been carved out of the stone uh, cave that was there that made up the tombs. And then 
uh, there was a big stone that had been rolled over the entrance to that uh, cave or to the tomb, uh, and it had the seal of Pilate, and Pilate had even put down uh, a couple of guards there to make sure well, the, that, well, the Jews had said, you need to do this because the disciples will try to come and steal his body away. And so what happened was the, uh, uh, we do not have a historical record of the actual resurrection of Jesus. Now that may sound strange, but there was nobody, there was nobody that saw the resurrection. Nobody saw him being actually raised from the dead. But Mary Magdalene came and she was so distressed when she came in and she saw that the tomb had been disturbed, that the stone had been rolled away, and that broke her heart. And just a little glance in and she realized that Jesus body was not in the tomb and so she made an immediate run up to uh, the house of Mary the mother of G actually John's the disciples house and the mother of Jesus was there because you'll remember that in the uh, uh, on the cross Jesus had called John John was at the foot of the cross along with Mary his mother and Jesus said uh, from the cross, uh, John, you, uh, you, uh, this is your mother. That you, in other words, you treat her like uh, your mother. And then she, he said to his mother, this is your son. In other words, he made that connection. And from then on, for the rest of, uh, of each one of their lives, uh, John took care of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so uh, we find that uh, Mary Magdalene ran up to where, wherever John's house was there in the Jerusalem area. And, and so when she gets there, she finds that Peter is there. And uh, she says to them, somebody has taken my Lord's body and has, and I don't know where it is. They moved it, and I don't know where it is. You see, Mary did not, Mary Magdalene did not carry the message of this, of his resurrection. She carried only the distressful news that she could not find the body of Jesus. It was not there, and that was very disturbing to her. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> we one thing that I I was uh, kind of uh, uh, impressed with was that uh, when she got to John's house, Peter was there. Now that says something about all of us, because oftentimes whenever we as Christians encounter other Christians who have had a failing in their Christian life, we can be so critical of them and ready to cut off fellowship with them and to not have anything to do with them because of their failing in the faith. And so what had happened was that Peter had denied before Jesus was crucified there in the Pilate's courtyard Whenever they were in the, uh, and, and then later in the uh, uh, house of the high priest, uh, when Jesus was being mistreated and, and lies were being told about him, Peter and John was in there, and John went on in, and Peter was out by the fire with the rest of them, uh, that was just staying around the crowd there. And some came and said to him, you're one of the disciples. And so he denied that he was. He denied that he even knew the Lord. And the Bible says he even cursed and said that he did not know him. 
Now, here is the strong Peter that says, I, I, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That to, to Jesus. And Jesus said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And so Peter denied the Lord. And he says there that uh, as the cock crew, crowed, that he, uh, that uh, uh, Peter looked at Jesus and Jesus looked at him. And you can just imagine the look on Jesus' face as he looked at his disciple who had failed him and who had denied him and who had uh, just said he did not know him. And, of course, this was not any news to Jesus. He knew it was going to happen. He'd already predicted that it would happen. But nevertheless, uh, it was still a a very disappointing look that he had, could could have. It, I'm, it melted the heart of Peter because it says that he went out from there and he wept bitterly. And we do not know. The Bible does not tell us where he went or what happened to Peter in the intervening time between that time in uh, the courtyard of the high priest and the resurrection morning. We do not know. It, it, the Bible doesn't tell us where he went. But we find that when Mary Magdalene went to the home of John, she found Jesus, that Peter there. And that tells us that John who loved the Lord very much, also had accepted Peter. And he had reached out to Peter, and he had invited Peter to come to his home and let us stay together. Instead of rejecting Peter and saying, you awful thing, you denied the Lord, I don't want to have anything to do with you, here we find a heart of love. John had the ability to love and to uh, forgive the offense that was to him as well as to Jesus. It was an offense to him. But yet he overcame all of that. And we find that they are together. This is the way that it's supposed to be with us. And so uh, he, she just says to them this, they have taken, they've taken the, the body of our Lord. And, he's, he, and I, I don't know where he is. And so they immediately... John and Peter immediately left and, and ran to the tomb. And it says that John outran Peter. And uh, someone has suggested that uh, it was that he was uh, younger and maybe faster. So not that he was more eager than Peter, but at least he was able to get there faster. And so he ran and he kind of looked in and he saw that the grave's clothes were there. And then it says Peter came and he went into the tomb and he looked and he had looked with a critical eye. The Greek word that is used in the seeing of, of Peter looking in there was that he looks, you know, you see something with a with a critical eye, you examine the facts, and he could see that those grave clothes were there, and they were in order. They were not all disheveled and, and torn. If somebody had come in and, and taken the body of Jesus, they would have, and those grave clothes were still there, they would have had to have unraveled all of those things, taken them up. They would no doubt have uh, left them in a pile and everything, but no, everything was there in order. Peter examined the facts, and he saw that. This tells us that he had some kind of an understanding of, of the fact that this was not somebody who had stolen the body of Jesus. And so we find then that, that John then went in, and he looked, and it says, the Greek word here says that he 
he saw with an understanding. Sometimes we're talking about, uh, we said, oh, I see. Well, we've been looking at it all the time, but we didn't understand what we were looking at. But this word indicates that John recognized that he understood that Jesus must have been raised. He didn't say that, but he must have understood that. And it's an interesting thing. Mary of Magdalene standing there, she is weeping. Her heart is broken. She is crying. And these two disciples, now, I had something very nice to say about John and, and then of Peter. Now we, we come up and I'm going to say something kind of bad about them because here is these two men. <laughs> they came in and they saw things. They reached their conclusions and they left the tomb. And it, it doesn't say anything about them reaching around to console Mary of Magdalene. They didn't, it doesn't say they encouraged her to say, oh, we understand that he is risen or anything like that. They, they just did not share. Uh, and, and, you know, that's a great failing sometimes. And I guess men uh, are, are more, uh, well, we are at least accused of it. <laughs> and, and I feel like that we are. Uh, sometimes not aware of the feelings of others. And here was this woman that was sobbing her heart out. And these disciples were so concerned about what they had seen and where their next mission was to go back home. And they left her there in the garden, left there in the cemetery. And she was still there, crying and then it says then that she then took a look inside the tomb and she saw there that there was laying on that ledge that they would have put the body where those grave clothes were she saw two angels one sitting at the head of where Jesus head would have been and the other angel was sitting where the feet of Jesus would have been. Now, in all of these years of my ministry and studying the scriptures and so on, I never realized what I'm going to share with you now because it was written in your book, the, uh, the, the Sunday School Lesson. This writer reveals something about that very fact that these angels were one on one end of the body of Jesus and one on the other as a he, you go back to the book of Exodus when the Lord is giving the uh, uh, instructions to Moses how he wants the uh, tabernacle that they were going to worship in in the temple, in the, uh, in the uh, wilderness to be in. And inside that was going to be a, the Ark of the Covenant. And in there, there was going to be it, on that ark, on the top of it, there was a uh, area, and they called it the mercy seat because once a year the high priest would go in and he would sprinkle the blood of a slain lamb, a, a sacrificial lamb uh, that was slain for the make atonement for the people's sins at that time, and they would sprinkle it on that mercy seat. And uh, and but there was a two cher cherubims, which are angels, the, the, they that had been carved out of pure gold, and one of them was looking at the mercy seat, and the other one was looking at the mercy seat on each end of it, and so here was a New Testament fulfillment of what had been described in the Old Testament of of that Jesus. Jesus shed his blood and he made atonement at way atonement at one meant if you think about that the he he for the sacrificial death of Jesus now the, that's quite an impression that is looked upon there to see 
what is going on. And so then it's interesting that this narrative does not say anything about Mary being amazed about the angels. There is no comment that she has. She really says, they say to her, uh, why are you weeping? And she says, somebody has taken my Lord's body and I don't know where it is. Now, I, I want us to see something about this. You see here, first of all, she is not impressed with the angels. Now, I, I hear so many people talk about us whenever we're getting to heaven and we're going to, you know, uh, I, I hear it all the time. Uh, whenever somebody uh, of a notoriety, maybe an athlete or somebody dies and so on, and they're saying, oh, well, you know, they're, they're looking down from heaven on, uh, you know, the ball game that's going on and seeing the, that, that person going to be very proud of their son down there playing a, a good ball game or a, a golf game. I guess we already mentioned golf for this weekend with the Masters going on in Augusta and so on. But, but yeah, they're looking down. And I, I just don't believe that's going to be happening. And I don't that we are so going to be so uh, uh, attracted to Jesus uh, and the throne of God and being in the glory of God the Father there in heaven that I just don't think our eyes are going to be looking back towards heaven uh, or towards earth and seeing what's going on down here. I just don't think we're going to be that concerned. Mary did not come around and say, oh, you Y'all, I want to tell you about these two angels that I saw. I saw two angels, and it was so exciting. No, she was not excited about that at all. She continued to weep. They did not have an answer. They did not have an answer for her dilemma and her question. And so what she did, she turned, and she saw, the Bible says she saw Jesus, but she didn't know that he was Jesus. And she thought he was the gardener. The Bible says she supposed that it must have been the gardener that took care of the cemetery there. And, and Jesus says to her, A woman, why are you weeping? And she says, They have taken my Lord's body. They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. I do not know where he is. Now, listen. You talk about loyalty. Mary Magdalene had a unique relationship with Jesus. Here is a woman, the Bible tells us, Luke and Mark tells us in their Gospels, both of them, that Mary of Magdalene, when she first encountered Jesus, was possessed by seven demons. You're talking about the devil having a hold of a person. The devil had a hold of Mary, of Magdalene. We don't know what she had done. You know, whenever the devil gets a hold of, uh, of a person and, and, and the demons... You say, you don't really believe in demons, do you? You know, we're in a sophisticated age that uh, all of this stuff is just uh, poppycock. It's just, just, just not so. It's just, it's just not there. That, that we're a bunch of fools as Christians to believe this kind of stuff. Well, let me say this. I believe, uh, the Bible says it, and I believe it. And... And so we, it, it's true, and it's true whether I would believe it or not. The Bible is the, it's there. And so can you imagine a person being possessed by a one demon? One demon would be enough to, uh, to, to control a person. They, can make, they control the actions. They control the feelings. They overpower a person and make a person do things that if they were not possessed by these demons would never do anything like that. And so uh, I, I've had dreams before 
in in my dreams uh, occasionally not very often but occasionally i would have a, that the, the devil was after me satan was after me his demons was after me and they it was a very ugly side it was a very fearsome fun side uh, and so what what happened uh well I was afraid yes but i knew that the scriptures had said how do you combat that you do so in the name of the lord jesus and so i whatever in my dream i even said i denounce you and i said get away from me in the name of jesus and that brought peace and that brought comfort and that done away with it when Mary encountered Jesus the first time, she was a person that was just absolutely under the control of Satan, if anybody had ever been. And Jesus cast all of those demons out of her. And he had done, he had done this sort of thing with many, many people. And, but he did it with her. And from that time on, she became a very close follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And she just loved him so very much. And she was faithful. And you're talking about being faithful. In Mary's mind at this time, she did not know that Jesus was raised from the dead. Even even in her conversation with the man that was in the garden, <laughs> you see, Jesus, she did not recognize that it was Jesus raised from the dead. She thought she was talking to a, a stranger. And so she was saying, they have taken my Lord, my teacher. And you see, what, what what's an amazing thing is even if Jesus, you know, Jesus would have been crucified. She saw him crucified. She knew he was dead. But yet he was still the Lord. The others would have been, maybe would have been so disappointed. The Bible says that the disciples all fled and left and so on. But here we find that, that even though she believes that her Lord is dead, he is still her Lord. That's an amazing sort of faith that she has, a commitment that she has. And so Jesus had first said, Woman, why are you weeping? She told him that. And then she says, Mary. He called her name. And the song that Walter sang just a moment ago, was so just this very story of Mary Magdalene and Jesus in the garden and the voice I hear falling on my ear is like no other. Jesus, that how, how can a man say, how can anybody say a word, call somebody's name? It's a way, the tone of voice. We cannot, we cannot even begin to try to uh, repeat the tone of voice that would have come across as he called her name. And that's the moment when that, when he called her name, that is the moment that she realized that it was Jesus because no other one could have called her name like Jesus. And so she was overwhelmed then with joy <laughs> hallelujah the, the the joy the joy that was the, the weeping that was there the distress that was there the 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 the, the heartbreaking that was there is gone and it is replaced with joy joy comes in the morning Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I tell you, folks, whenever we are going to be facing, uh, we do face 
difficulties. We do face disappointments. We do face challenges. We have heartbreaks. But I, I, everyone in this room, I can say to you, it has had some loved one, someone who was very precious to them, taken uh, and, and, and have died. We've gone to the cemeteries. We've gone to the funerals. We've buried people who was very precious to us, our fathers, our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our children even, and on and on. It, it, it's, it's, it's our heartbreaks that we have. But let me say to you that the power of the Lord is so great that he can overpower all of the grief and all of the distress and give us joy, joy, joy. And uh, that, that, that's where our strength is. It's the joy of the Lord. As a matter of fact, that's what he says. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And, it, it, and, and Jesus had said, my joy I am going to give to you. Now, how, how could Jesus have thought about having joy in the time when he knew he was going to go to the cross? but he knew that there was going to be a glorifying of himself and the Lord through his obedience as he goes to the cross and dies. Now, uh, you're all going to have to help me on the time. I don't have a watch, and I don't know when you all are ready to give, give me a signal. I'm talk, For you that are watching on the, uh, the, the TV, I'm talking to the class here now. I, I, I look at the camera and I don't see anything, anybody making a signal to me. But <laughs> but, but, but I, I look to the class. So y'all give, give, give me a cutthroat uh, thing or something whenever it's time for me to uh, hush. But what I want to say now is this, that uh, that it Jesus says to she 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 immediately, is going to fall down at the feet of Jesus, and she's going to reach out to, to get a hold of him. And he says to her, Mary, do not cling to me. That's what the word means. Do not cling to me. Uh, what does that mean? He's not rejecting her. He's not pushing her away. But what he is saying is this. There's something else that he's going to, this it follows this instructions to her, is that uh, I, I have not yet ascended to my Father. Do not cling to me. I'm not yet the old the old way of understanding and fellowshipping that we have known these uh, two or three years together is is different. There is going to be a new relationship now we find out whenever we look into the book of acts and the day of pentecost and the coming of the holy spirit and all of that sort of thing is that we have a different relationship i have never seen the lord jesus i, I have never seen him have you ever seen him no we've never seen him but we believe do we not we believe that he is there. Well, why? We, the, the Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of Jesus. And the, he, Jesus, comes from the ghost of the Father and he gets the, uh, the Holy Spirit and he brings him back. And, the, and, and that's the way that the disciples uh, find their experience with the Holy Spirit there in the book of Acts is that Everything is different. We have a different relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ than we could ever have in walking with him down here on earth. And that's what he said to her. But he says this, Mary, I've got an instruction for you. You go tell, don't cling to me, you go tell my disciples and Peter. It's interesting that Jesus would have said in Peter, yeah, you go and call on and tell Peter. Oh, my, that's such a wonderful word. That, that instructions, that 
I want Peter to know that I'm sending him a special message that I'm, he's distressed. His heart's still broken, but I, I accept him. I love him, and you let him know that. And so he says, you do this. <clears throat> Brother Walter, I appreciate you coming to me this, but I'm, I'm as blind as I can be. I can't read this. I don't know what it says. <laughs> so. I was thinking three more minutes. Three. three more minutes. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Well, let me say this to you. I appreciate that. Uh, let me say that when Mary went back to the disciples, she had a different message than the first time she went to the disciples because this time she could say, I have seen the Lord. I have seen him. There is a witness there is a witness. I have seen him. And that makes all the difference in the world. That she is not weeping anymore. She's filled with joy. And she comes to say, He is risen. I've talked to him. I've talked to him. Don't know all, all the things that she said, but she must have been filled with a lot of things to tell them about her experience. And of course, they begin to wonder. You know, later on, somebody comes in and says, well, there's been some talk. This, they, 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 some of the women, they've been talking about what they saw. Well, it's over. This is the message that we have today, is that we believe in and that we serve a risen Savior, a risen Lord. And may he be glorified in our lives as we do this. And I thank you for listening and paying attention. We close in a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we pray this day that you will fill our hearts with a joy that, uh, that, that, that you want to give to each one of us and that we may be victorious in our lives because Jesus lives. And we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. That was a great message, and I've been enlightened because uh, he, he mentioned the fact that uh, there's no proof that Jesus was resurrected, but we know that he was, no question about it. Uh, Brother Jim, uh, you have a song for us? Brother Jim DeLay has music for you. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Billy. That was a very inspiring message, for, especially for today. I'd like for you to use your imagination and go somewhere with me this morning. If I could take a trip through time to any place I'd want to be, if I could just turn back the years, there's one place I'd like to see. It's a hill they call Mount Calvary, just outside old Jerusalem. That is where they crucified the only man who never sinned. I'd like to stand beside my Lord as he was led to Pilate's hall. Son of God, I'd want to shout, oh yes he is, 
Yet they only would believe There never was a man like this I see the crown of thorns he wore And maybe wiped the blood away I'd walk the streets and through the gate As the soldiers lead the way At the cross I'd fall down on my knees And I would hear my Savior say Oh God, my work on earth is done I'm coming home to you today I'd walk inside the empty tomb I'd see the stone the angels move i share the joy that Mary knew with disciples that he loved. Yes, he rose and came out of the grave, and now with God he reigns on high. Just waiting for that final day when glory fills the eastern sky. Now I can't travel in the past, I have to stay here in today, but I can tell and help others find the way Oh my friend, just listen to his voice He speaks to us from up above No beginning and no end To his eternal gift of love No beginning and no end To his eternal gift of love That was a great song and well presented, a great message, well presented, and we look forward to seeing you next week at the same time, 10 o'clock, Sunday morning. Thank you.